Hi, it's been like um, ages. <laughs> Apologies. I had to just get off the morning show, um, you know, to self-present. Many times we work so hard and we forget that we have a life and there are things that we're supposed to do outside um, work. Let me see if I can get a bright spot uh, here. Okay, so good morning. Um, you know, um, I always tell people that you will find what you're looking for in life. Whatever it is that you seek, you will eventually find. And that has happened for me many, many, many times. And yesterday I was telling my colleague, I said, every time I've looked for something, I've always found it, either by accident, or it came to me, or something, but I always, always find what I'm looking for. So what happened this morning, um, because sometimes I try to flip through TV channels to find something, maybe the news, and I was flipping through TV stations, and I found something I had been looking for. Um, being on Rice with on my Nigerian phone is great, you know, 5 to 6 a.m. weekdays, but I, I got off for a bit. And I was asking myself, you've been feeling others, um, what has been feeling you? So I felt that hunger for some time now. And this morning, my favorite guy is on TV. <laughs> what do you hear my day? Okay, one of my favorite guys. It has to be the second. Okay, so um, I was blown away. And I just said, my goodness, I've been looking for this. I've been looking for this and I found it. And what he said was very profound. And, and for me as a person, I know that I explored part of that, but I didn't exploit it, exploit it. So this is what he said, that when you read in the Bible, the portion where it says something about the slothful person, that it goes beyond the person being lazy. That it's more like you not exploiting opportunities. Let me put up this AC, I think it's taken for my volume. It's, it's you not exploiting opportunities, and this is what it is. I thought about Dangote when, when he was speaking, and this is what Dangote did, for example. He got into cement business, yeah? And in that business, he got distributors, meaning that people were able to go to a place closer than his factory to get um, the product, right? So let's say in Port Harcourt, I'm in Port Harcourt, for example. So let's, let's say in Port Harcourt, he got a distributor in Eleme. The guy in Eleme will take care of Onne or Krika and that axis. Um, Eleme Junction, you know, that axis. Romokurushi, Elelewo. Then he gets a guy in Chuba. So the guy in Chuba, the distributor, will take care of Romosi, um, maybe even up to Romokuru, um, Romuji, and Mohua, that axis. Then he gets a guy in town, like maybe Agri Road. So the guy takes care of the town axis, Borokira and all that. You know, then he gets a guy maybe at um, Omagwa. So the guy takes care of that axis. So this is what Dangote thinks. So let me add spaghetti. But let me ask you a question. When Dangote thinks spaghetti, do you think Dangote will be thinking of getting distributors? I don't think so. What would he do? He will go to his guys who are already distributors and say, I'm bringing in spaghetti. Would you like to be first on the train? So even if the guy doesn't have a spaghetti store, because if he's seen that this producer has products and can give him mileage, what does he do? He can open the next store and say, I'm doing spaghetti, or I'm doing rice and those kinds of things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he exploits that single opportunity. The first opportunity was cement. In pushing out the cement, he gets distributors. Now that he has distributors, he can now push in other products. So he's not looking for a totally new market. No, he already has distributors. So even if they're not going to be the distributors, you might have family members or no other business people that will be interested. So in some way, he just doesn't have distributors, he also has food soldiers. So I, I think about my time on radio, and I think about my books, um, this one, and the mic came on, The Money of Your Life is Somewhere. I've done a, a reprint, by the way. So here I've written Mindset and Strategies for Building a Phenomenal Career. 
Yeah, that's it. Phenomenal career. Um, so I think about the copies of, and the mic came on that I've sold, I've sold about a thousand. How did I do that? My audience on radio. That's it. I don't think I've sold to anyone who's never heard me before. No. The people that I've sold to, I put that have heard me. 1,000 copies gone. And this is a reissue. This is a reissue. So this is the old one. I printed this just last week. So this is the old one. So you see, see the bottom. This just has, and the mic came on. This has, you know, this on it, yeah. And I can say, like I said, that I've sold only to those that listen to me on radio. So I exploited my time as a morning show host and, you know, doing the weekend just on Saturdays at 9 p.m. That's when you can get me on radio right now. 92.3 um, Nigeria Info, if you're in Port Harcourt, 9 p.m. Saturdays, that's where, it, that's where it goes down. What I'm saying is that because Dangote understood the game, he was able to exploit the first opportunity. I have people in different places that, that sell my product. Now I want to push out more products. What do I do? I go to those people first and tell them, Maybe you're getting 30% off the cement. With this one, you can get 45 or you can get 40. You'll be my distributor in the whole, maybe even the whole of Port Harcourt. So what does that mean? You call the Angote office in Lagos and they tell you, where are you calling from, Port Harcourt? Oh, go to number 16, room Okoro Drive or whatever. Our products are there. So the man himself doesn't even need to do any marketing because once people are looking for pasta, he's the only guy they go to in Port Harcourt. So that alone is huge. So many times we get a single opportunity and we miss it. We're not able to exploit it. You get into an office, you have people that you meet in the course of your work in office. What do you do with those relationships? What do you do with those opportunities? You meet people who are really smart. You have a team. Are you bringing them in to train? Are you leveraging on your relationships to make your work better, to make your team bigger? He also talked about deadlines. And you know when he was saying that, I just thought about it. I was watching Emily's post on, on Instagram, Emily Walikoya. And Emily says, you need to have, she, okay, there's something she was doing. She was saying, um, I'm going to grow my Instagram followers to, was it, I can't remember the figure. Let me just say 100,000 within three months. Buying followers is easy. Yeah, if you have the money, it's easy. I don't know if that's still a thing, but I was saying it was such a big thing. I think it's still a thing. They still buy followers, right? But growing followers organically is not the same. You know why? You need to put work into it. So what did Emily do? She gave herself a target, which means that for me to be able to grow from 30,000 to 100,000, there are things I need to do, which is putting out quality content online and also at every event i speak i'll push um, followers people to go follow me online so then it's organic then you actually do the work and you grow thereby people don't understand that in work there is growth i'm here today the way i am because i worked and i grew and i learned and i opened my heart to opportunities to learn and to grow I have water here. It's here, right? If I don't open it? Okay, wait, let me show you something. So this is a bottle of water. This is a bottle of water. This is not open. This is open. This is full. This is full. Have I drunk any of them? No. Do I have water? Yes. Can I be thirsty as I am? Yes. But I have water. One is opened, one is unopened. And that is life. So many of us have opportunities that we have refused to exploit. That makes us thoughtful. I'm not saying you don't have a job. You might have a job, but are you exploiting it? Computer, see computer in front of me. Meaning that there's anything, anything I want to learn while I'm sitting here, I can learn. So like me, many of you have computers in front of you. There's internet, but you leave it and you go to social networking pages and you're, having, you're chatting, you're having conversations, you're not growing. And someone else is there learning how to do stuff on YouTube. This, so the internet in front of you 
is an opportunity that you can exploit. Are you exploiting it? That's the question. So, you know, when I, when, I, when I heard him speak this morning, I just went, wow. So he's saying that I'm going to do something. You know, 2020 is our year of execution, yes. But you need to give yourself a timeline. Okay, so I printed a thousand copies more of this book. By the way, students of uh, River State University are using it for one of their courses in mass communication. That's why I had to do the reprint. They're not taking off all the thousand. They're not taking a thousand copies. They're not up to a thousand students in that department, one to four. But a certain level, they're using it. But what, what I can do if I say I want to exploit the opportunity is now I have, let's say, 700 copies. Then I'll give myself a timeline. I'll say, this is January, before the end of April. And no, you must sell off all these copies. By the way, the PDF is ready. Those who are asking for PDF, it's ready now. So if I give myself that target, what does that mean? I need to now have a plan. This is January. Let's say January is gone. So we're having February, March, and April to work with. So you know, you have 90 days. In 90 days, let's do math. I have another phone. I'm not used to it, but let me just check. Um, calculator. Sorry, this is how I think, and this is how I work. So we have, let's say we have, um, let's work with 800 copies, right? 800. I have 90 days, right? Divided by 90 days equal to 8. So it means that I have to sell eight copies every day for the next 90 days, and I'll be done. The next question becomes, how do I sell eight copies every day? What is the most effective way to do that? In fact, let me target selling 15 every day. How can I sell 15 books every day? Do you know what I'm saying? So that's how it works. So it goes away from... Oh, I want to. I want to sell all the books. So no, it's much more than that. There's the how question. The cartons are here. There's the how question. How? What must I do? Just what I'm saying. So we need to get away from just being oh, um, I have a job. I, no, no, no. Where many of us are very slothful. We need to move away from being slothful. One of the ways to do that is to have timelines. In 30 days, I would have read 30 books. How? I'm not saying you should start on a high, don't do that. But you need to learn how to exploit opportunities. And he talked about the, the, the colonial masters. They knew they were not going to be here forever. What did they do? They were shipping out things. How did plantain live here? That, that had not to the colonial masters, but how did plantain live here? To Malaysia, um, palm nuts rather. How did palm nuts leave Nigeria to Malaysia? You know, how did cocoa live here to become chocolates? How? Somebody thought about it and the person said, if I don't do this, when I leave this place, I won't have made the best use of this opportunity. You're working now, you have relationships now, there are things that have, you have access to. When you leave that place, when you leave that place, would you be able to turn back, look back and say, I made the best use of that opportunity? So you want to start thinking in that way right now. Today, what best use can I make of this opportunity? I'm here now. I won't be here forever. I'm not the foundation now. <laughs> Even the foundation can be removed. But that's what I'm saying. So where you are now, are you making the best use of the opportunities available to you? I want to write. I want to write. You have a computer. You're not writing. I want to write. I want to write. You have a phone. You're not doing anything with it. When I was writing um, and the mic came on my first book, I used my phone to record because I couldn't remember everything initially. So I recorded, I spoke a lot. I just, you know, just be recording, recording my text, my speech, record, record, record. I got to a point, I sent to someone and I said, um, transcribe. So the person transcribed. By the time he sent it back, I had started, you know, thinking and expanding. So the things that I'd forgotten, I wrote them down. I put them into the text. I expanded, expanded, expanded. And right now, on my phone, that's how I remember things. Once something comes to me, I go to my notes and I put it down so that I don't forget. And I can use it. So many of us have tools. We are not exploiting. My brother, my sister, the thing in your hand will not be there forever. He also talked about, that's why people save money now. And that's why I tell you that if you don't have use for the money, the money would leave. 
The same reason why money goes to the rich. They know that they will be exploited. They know that they will have better value. That's what happens now. In the hand of the rich person or the wealthy person or the businessman, money gets more value. Yes. Money comes to you. You want to go and eat your arm, your arm, your arm. You want to go and buy expensive phone. It's fine. You're meeting your needs, but you're putting it into someone else's pocket. So money knows to go to where it will grow. Money knows that I'm one now. When I get into anyone's hand, I'll be 10. When I get into this person's hand, I'll be 20. They want to go there. You lose them. Somebody grows them. It's a difference. You might get something, but there's a growth pattern. So if a thing is coming into your hand, you must know what to do with it. You must, we must get into that mindset, that mental space. Know what to do with it. Whatever is coming into your hand, whatever you have in your hand, you have to know what to do with it. Cocoa will remain cocoa. You know your beverage you drink is cocoa. The chocolate you eat is cocoa and many other things. But cocoa will remain in the pod if you do not think of how to exploit it. I